Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. My name is Shay McDuffie, and I am the current interim director for the Office of Residence Life. And my name is Candy Wong Pham, and I'm the director of student housing and commercial portfolio management with the REDCAM team for real estate at Howard University. All right, and we will get started. So this year is going to be the year of the bison as you are moving in. That is our theme, very much about pride and getting you all um, involved with your campus. So the Office of Residence Life is committed to creating and supporting a rich learning environment, as well as a sense of belongingness in a community of care and mutual respect that empowers students to be engaging citizens through fostering the development of lifelong skills. For our contact information, we really, really want you to follow us. So do follow us at HUResLife1867 on Instagram. Again, HUResLife1867. We do post a lot of updates, a lot of opportunities, um, almost everything housing. We're going to be really active on our Instagram this year. So we want to make sure that you have access to that. And that if you have any questions about the housing application process, um, or anything moving forward, do email us at huresleft at howard.edu and we will assist you. So for the rest of our Residence Life team, there actually are four of us in office. It is myself, Ms. Roberts, who is our Housing Operations Coordinator, Mr. Moore, who is our Assignments and Billing Coordinator, and Ms. Thomas, who's our Administrative Assistant. In total for the Office of Residence Life, it's not really just us in the office, yes, but outside of that, we do have graduate assistants and resident assistants that we hire as well. So we have about 130 resident assistants who are going to be here for the next year, 17 graduate assistants, and then with our partnership with Campus Apartments, they're the ones who actually run your building. They are your building managers. They are your property management company. There are nine building managers. So next we'll go through our freshman residence halls. So we have five halls on campus that are specifically for FTIC. Currently we have College Hall North, which houses about 400 plus uh, freshman female identifying residents that is located on 4th Street. Next we have Charles R. Drew Hall. This has about 330 beds for male identifying residents. This is on Gresham Place Northwest. Then we have George W. Cook Hall. This has about 200 freshmen um, male identifying residents, and this is located on Fairmont Street. So this one is by Burr Gymnasium. Next, we have the Harriet Tubman Quadrangle. This has about 600, and 600 plus freshmen female identifying residents. This is located on 4th Street, and as a Howard alum and a past, a quad girl, my personal favorite. Um, then you have the Bethune Annex, which is also for FTIC. So this one's a little bit different. This has FTIC and continuing students. So if you are living in this building, there are 545 spots um, for all genders. This is also on 4th Street as well. It's right next to the CAF. And at this building, again, it's not just FTICs, it's co-ed, it's also upperclassmen. All right, so we have a lot of programming, a lot of opportunities when it comes to the Office of Residence Life and all of our partners as well. So for our resident assistants, our graduate assistants, our building managers, our campus partners, campus partners, uh, we all host programs on a weekly basis. And the goal of this is try to get you engaged, um, hear your concern, discuss new ideas, and also just overall have an opening to improve your residential experience. Uh, my personal favorite event that we do and really our highly, our most anticipated event every year is called Rest Fest. So Rest Fest is a campus-wide competition where all the residence halls are involved. They have different events. So that can be um, step team, stroll team, field day, debate, game night. There are so many different events that you can participate in. And we want to make sure that you have the opportunity to join. 
those teams are actually going to start looking for members um, almost immediately after moving. So probably towards the end of September. So do go to your hall events, go to anything where they're offering tryouts or where they're offering signups. It is really exciting. Um, and it really gets the whole campus involved. And as you can see, here are some of the pictures that we have from RestFest when we held it in Crampton Auditorium for the performance teams. Next, we also have our Res Life Royal Court. So Ms. Herman ran uh, with the Residence Life Royal Court this year. Um, they are amazing. They are members of the court strive to promote good citizenship and scholastic achievement within the residence halls. In doing so, both endeavors of the King and Queen will be to promote the great mission of the Office of Residence Life as a student ambassador in their collegiate life with its strong morals and values. So you can get a part of the Res Life Royal Court as well. Um, there are representatives for each of the residence halls and they have their pageants, which you can participate in. Here are some of our pictures of events and our Res Life Court, as you see in the top left, um, as they went to chapel for us for Res Fest. The pictures in the middle are actually the lobbies of some of our properties. So during Res Fest, we all get involved, all of our partners get involved, and we get very, very um, excited about it. So this is what the RAs and GAs at those buildings did for the Access, the Quad, and then Drew Hall. And then the rest of those pictures are specifically from programming opportunities within those halls. So how can you specifically get involved? There's so many opportunities, so many things that are available. Um, so of course you have your resident assistant and your graduate assistant position. These are going to open up for application within the spring semester every single year. Um, once you are at the university for a full year, then you can apply to a position. Outside of these, when you do move in, other, part, other things that you can take part in are your residence hall council, your junior RA program, which prepares you um, for the RA position, rest vest, you can either be a coach or coordinator, the hall pageants, green team, student advocacy. Um, and then in general, we also do have a wellness, wellness, sorry, wellness Wednesdays with the office of the Dean of the Chapel. This is a partnership that we're doing and we're continuing for the next year. Um, so you can learn some very good mental health tools, learn how to help those around you and really be a community citizen. We do pride ourselves on living and learning communities, so not all the events will only be specifically on just having a good time. Of course, we always want you to have a good time. It's always going to be fun. It's always going to be engaging, but we do have things that are specific on teaching you different lessons, um, even if that's just about how to do laundry in my residence hall or things like that. So we host a lot of programs in our residence halls. In total, we hold about 117 programs a month. And again, that's with Res Life, that's with all of our RAs and GAs, that's everyone um, holding different events at different times. The biggest thing is that we try to make our programs inclusive. Um, we set goals and we plan for every single program. So we have things that we want to meet at the end. Um, our RAs are really pushing to make sure that these programs have things that help you, for example, develop leadership skills, build social skills, build problem solving skills. And all of them are creative because at the end, we want to make sure that you're always having fun at these events. Outside of that, I'm sure Campus Life has already touched on this, move in programming. So we do have kind of three weeks set up for you when it comes to move in. We want to make sure there's always something available for you. For the first week of move in, Res Life hosts different move in programming. So that's going to be things like a scavenger hunt that you can do. We're going to be hosting a yoga event as well. Um, after that move in a week, then you have bison week. And after bison week, of course, then you're going to have welcome week. With the Office of Residence Life, we do also have a triage that is going to be there for move in a week. So that is going to be held in the Blackburn Center specifically um, daily. So that's going to be anything that you have concerning student health, financial aid, um, the birth start, advising, et cetera. There will be people there to assist you with some of those questions. 
renter's insurance. Renter's insurance is very important. It is required for you to live in the residence hall. We do have a partnership with Grad Guard. You can sign up with them through your housing application, or you can also sign up for any personal um, rental insurance that you would prefer as well. All right, and that brings me to the end of our section. Again, we are the Office of Residence Life. Our email is huresslife at howard.edu. If you scan this QR code, it's gonna take you to our housing website where we're gonna be posting a lot of information about moving, a lot of information that you need moving forward. Um, the move-in dates for this coming year, as you uh, should know, is that August 7th through August 12th is going to be FTIC week. During those weeks, we are going to be doing movements at different buildings. So please watch out for your placements. Your placements will specifically say what your move-in schedule is going to be. So you have to move in during your scheduled time. And with that, I'll pass it over to Ms. Wong Sam. Thank you, Ms. McDuffie. Again, my name is Candy Wong Sam, and I'm the Director of Student Housing Facility. Next slide. My team consists of myself, Kenneth Belton, who is the Deputy Director of Facilities and Maintenance, as well as a former Howard alum is my Contracts Manager, Will Jolly Esquire. The, our department was just created last year in May of 2022. So we have just completed our first school year. And the purpose of the department is to provide routine assessments of our housing facilities, provide day-to-day -day responsiveness to our students, uh, maintenance teams and contractors, ensure the facilities are in good repair, um, provide oversight to our third-party um, management uh, contractor uh, vendor campus apartments. Um, we used to have three and now we have one. And uh, also keeping sure that our, making sure our resident halls are up to date with relevant codes, et cetera. We're here should you need us to escalate any um, concerns. However, your first uh, report for any maintenance work orders in your dorm room should be to your residence hall via your electronic software that you will be getting information to prior to you arriving here to Howard University. Um, and prior to move in, we're hoping that most of you review all of this information and uh, register prior to you arriving on Bison Week. However, the first thing that you would do would be to report your concern electronically. And uh, within 48 to 72 hours, you should have a response and a repair done. If for any reason you have a concern, you are to contact your building manager at your resident hall. From that point, if you need any further assistance, we are who you reach out to. Uh, would be my department at housing concerns at howard.edu. You'll have that information on a, on a, on a following slide. Um, so next, if you have a maintenance emergency, uh, such as you know an overflowing toilet or something like that, uh, during your mandatory orientation, we'll be giving you some more tips on how to handle all those. But first, obviously, if it's an emergency like a fire or something like that, call 911. Um, a maintenance emergency, you want to report that immediately to your front desk because that is an emergency. And then you follow up with that same electronic um, maintenance request that we mentioned that you can do right on your cell phone. Um, and if there's any concerns or lack of resolve from that, that's when you would escalate it to my team. But first, you must always report to your resident hall. Next slide. All right. So we want to make sure everybody coming to Howard University is aware that we are a no smoking and dry campus. So there is no smoking anywhere on the university, no smoking of any kind, legal or otherwise. Um, there's several problems that smoking creates. Obviously, one of the big things that it impacts here at, at the resident halls is it sets off the fire alarm. Um, it creates poor ventilation situations as people are blocking their vents to not get impacted by others. Um, there's health hazards, of course, you all know, which is why generally we say we shouldn't smoke, and roommate disagreements, and of course, losing your housing. 
Um, also keep in mind that uh, there is no alcohol and any alcohol will be co confiscated should it be found. And if you should create an incident from smoking with the fire alarm, minimum fines are $350. So we wanna make sure that we do not smoke anything or bring it to even to campus or any drinking. Next slide. Also, I wanted to review the top five reasons that we have, or four reasons that we have fire alarms at the resident halls. Number one, smoking. Smoking when you're not supposed to smoke, okay? So clear violation of Howard University's policy. Um, people, bad cooks, burning food, uh, you know, all in all kinds of apparatuses. And keep in mind that the majority of our resident halls do not have kitchens, therefore cooking is really not allowed. So again, up there with the top reasons for fire alarms. Preparing hair with high heat, with heated appliances, hot, hot, hot blow dryers, uh, hair dryer, any kind of hot item. Um, there are specific things that we'll be going over in your mandatory student orientation to train you on these things. Your RAs will be going over with them and they're in your, um, they'll be in part of the documents that you sign when you move in. But when you are using these apparatuses, we are asking that you use, that you ventilate. Uh, ventilate your room, ventilate the area, via open your door, the windows. And uh, if you live in the quad, there is a beauty salon that you can go down there and do your hair down there. Um, also, the last one would be dryer and really wash machine belts uh, as well being popping from uh, students overloading the machines with too many clothes, okay? There are levels to these things. And if you kind of burn out the machine by overloading, it can be a challenge and they can set the fire alarm off. So generally speaking, most of the fire alarms that we have here all come from user era or students. Next slide. All right, this is the list, what not to bring. <laughs> So uh, make sure that you review this uh, carefully and you may have already purchased things um, that you might have to return. So let's just go through them. Uh, do not bring any candles, incense or fragrance burners. I know you guys who, you know, you like the, the smell goods and everything. It can't be anything that you burn, okay? So that's the main thing that we want to bring out there. Command strips, just say no to command strips. I know plenty of you guys probably already bought them. Take them back to Target, Walmart, or wherever you got them. They do not create, uh, prevent damage from walls. They actually create damage on the walls that could cost you a lot of money when they cost you $5 to begin with. So we're asking that you uh, go back to the old school thumbtacks or something like that, or molding putty. Molding putty, it just breaks off like, Play-Doh and you just stick it right on there. Um, so that's what we're recommending, molding putty. Non-surge protectors as extension cords, um, motorbikes and motor scooters are not allowed um, to be stored in your room by any uh, shape of, of form. We, they are working on some possible locations for those in parking areas, but that's to be determined. Um, halogen lamps, weapons of any kind, um, chemical uh, mace or pepper sprays, fireworks, illegal drugs, drug paraphernalia, alcohol, hazardous materials, um, animals, unless they are otherwise approved through student services, portable space heaters, and pretty much any kind of cooking um, a device other than a microwave However, that would need to be approved. A lot of you are asking, well, what can I bring um, between a fridge and a microwave? So for everyone on the call, you can't have a refrigerator and a microwave at the same time unless you get a micro fridge combo unit. The purpose of those is that when your microwave is on, your compressor for your refrigerator is not running and vice versa so that they protect the integrity of our electric. So with that being said, you can either 
rent them, which is what we recommend through myfridgerental.com, uh, where you pay monthly. You, they also can be purchased if you would like. They are between four and five hundred dollars for purchase. Um, those are the only way that you can have a microwave and a refrigerator in your room. So please talk to your roommate upon your assignment, receiving your assignments and, and discuss uh, the best options for you to do. Um, if you have any additional questions of what not to bring, please feel free to contact the Office of Resident Life and University Housing or even my department. And here's our contact information, student housing facilities and commercial portfolio management. You can reach us at housingconcerns at howard.edu. And again, this applies to anything related to the housing facilities to be differentiated between us and resident life who handles all things, everything else, okay? All right, thank you so much and welcome to Howard.